Hey there, friends. Welcome to another one of these little pig casts, if you want to call it that. I forgot the original name that I used to call them, but we'll go with that for now because it has a nice little bit of a ring to it, maybe. So today, as you could imagine by the title, we're going to talk about something that I've mentioned before about Di Vernon being a terrible person. Now, here's the thing. As magicians, for some odd reason, we tend to idolize those old people. We tend to idolize the Slidinis, the Cardinis, the Di Vernons. Harry Houdini apparently is one of the ones that uh, even gets idolized by lay people that know nothing about him for some odd reason. But on today's little episode, we are going to be talking about Di Vernon as a person. Now, Di Vernon was a god when it came to magic. He created a, a lot of stuff. He was uh, pretty much one of the most prolific creators of close-up magic that we have ever had. And uh, Di Vernon was known for making sure that all the movements that he did were very natural. That were stuff that people would do normally when handling props like balls or coins or decks of cards. They were natural as a person would do it. Magicians tend to do things like magicians do it and not care as to how people handle these objects. And Di Vernon was one of those that really was a pioneer of making sure that we were as natural as possible. Because the more natural we are, the more deceptive we are. Because we are essentially doing the same things that the lay people would be doing, but incorporating our little dirty, disgusting, sneaky moves. Now, that being said, Di Vernon was also a terrible person. Di Vernon was a father. He was a husband. And that's about it when it comes to that particular side of his life. He wasn't necessarily a good husband. He wasn't necessarily a good father. He spent most of his time working on magic, hanging around magicians, traveling to learn about tricks and moves and slights and writing. And he spent most of his time and his life dedicated to the arts and ignored his family. For example, his son Derek, when asked as to how Di Vernon was as a father, mentioned as a father, he was a good magician. One of the most prolific authors we have, Richard Kaufman, who's written pretty much uh, most books on magic. He had this to say about Di Vernon. If Vernon liked you, he shared great magic and stories with you. If he didn't like you, he didn't give you much of his time. Fortunately, he was fond of me, of course, referring to Richard, and we had some enjoyable time together. As a friend in magic, he was a good friend. He was also a man who was proud of the fact that has never worked a day in his life. He was lucky that there were other people around him to pay his rent. Also, he didn't give a crap about anything apart from magic and his magic friends. He saw very little of his family and didn't seem to care much at all about his kids. I met Vernon's grandson once in 1987 at a roast for Vernon at the last symposium in New York. I said to him that it must have been great to have Di Vernon as your grandfather. The kid was already in his teens and he responded, I wouldn't know. This is only the second time. I've ever met him. People in magic hate to hear this stuff because they've put Vernon on a very high pedestal and in the world of magic, he deserves to be there. Now, I do tend to agree with that in the sense of Di Vernon as a magician. As a matter of fact, I put a little bit of a video, I believe a year ago, I was still covered under a mask where I titled it Di Vernon is an overrated hack just because I had a little bit of a kerfluffle with people on Facebook. I had an issue with uh, one of the people there that had something to say about magic tutorials online. And he said that Vernon was a tremendous person and he had more skill on his pinky than I could ever have on even a small fraction of my little finger. And uh, of course, I titled the video just to aggravate him a little bit. Vernon was an overrated hack. Lance Pierce, who is another tremendous author in the history of magic, had this to say about Di Vernon. Indeed, wasn't it on a television documentary, Di Vernon, The Spirit of Magic, where his son said, as a father, my dad was a great magician. And who was it that said, it was worth a million dollars to me to meet Vernon. And it's worth a million dollars to never meet anyone like him ever again. Vernon had an obsession like no other. In the early days when he lived in the Midwest, he thought nothing of leaving his family for weeks upon weeks at a time to chase down a whisper of a rumor of someone who could do a bottom or center deal, sometimes with little or no advance notice. He was remarkably irresponsible, and the fact that he had to pay rent never impinged himself on his mind. 
He was an extreme artist, for there was little room for anything else in his life but his art. Everything was put aside for magic. This made him both a great artist and an insufferable partner for anyone who didn't share his passion. Vernon had a wife and children, but his true family was a network of grifters, card sharps, manipulators, sleight of hand artists, both novice and professional, and high class entertainers. Sometimes I wonder what it must be like to be so consumed, so involved, that absolutely nothing else exists. And what fruit could come from that degree of disbalance? In Vernon's case, magicians all over the world for generations are thankful, even if his family isn't. He only had but one true love, and he lived in service of it alone. Do I want to be that? Well, no. And yes. Now, there's something to be said about having such a profound dedication to magic to the point where your entire life is enveloped around it. Your entire life is dedicated to the craft and improving it and talking to magicians. But Guy Vernon was kind of a cunt. He was a terrible father. And as Richard Kaufman said, if he didn't think you were a good magician, he wouldn't give you much of his time. So I doubt that he had many relationships, friendships, or people that he knew outside of magic. And to that, I feel like Di Vernon is the ultimate magic virgin. I've seen people on Instagram replicate his poses. I've seen long blog posts about him and wanting to know him and studying his material and idolizing him and not caring about his other transgressions as a father and human being and really only focusing on his magic and saying that he's pretty much the pinnacle of magic from people who are uh, essentially younger than I am. Now, with that being said, I do think we need some Vernons in art forms. I do think that every art form needs somebody like Vernon to dedicate their entire lives so we could study from them. But at the same time, it shouldn't be you. It shouldn't be me. It shouldn't be anyone that you know, because ultimately having a person like this is uh, what we call in the Spanish language, uh, toxico or toxica. Toxica is a uh, term that I like to refer to as the thoughts, the, the hoes. The, the woman that will call you a hundred times and leave them a thousand messages and uh, threaten that she's going to go to the cops if you don't go back with her and tell them that you punched her and she's going to punch herself to make it look like she has a black eye. That's a toxica. But a toxico in this case is a toxic individual, somebody that only really cares about himself and the stuff that he cares about. In this case, Di Vernon, of course, only cared about magic. And as I mentioned in the previous lesson, you need to be a well-rounded individual. The better you are as a person, the better you are as a magician. But the better you are as a magician, the worse you are as a person. It's a simple mathematical formula, and it gets reinforced every time I talk to magicians that stand out in the community, magicians that are revered in the community, that people look up to, that people have some sort of appreciation to. Every time I talk to these individuals, I realize that these people are the closest to people that they could possibly be in the field. They're more people and less magic. They care more about themselves. They care more about the people around them. They care more about their families and other passions and other hobbies than they do magic. But of course, they still have a deep, profound love and appreciation for magic. And it's easy to depend on magic for a personality because essentially it's a, it's a kit. It's a, a kit that all you have to do is learn a trick, learn the pattern, and you immediately seem to have a personality. Again, the key word there is seem to have a personality, not actually have a personality, not actually have relevant human traits, relevant social traits that'll get you things like jobs and relationships and closer to your family. Now, of course, daddy issues notwithstanding for me, I have to say that uh, when you have the responsibility of having kids and getting married, I think that needs to be your focus. Now, obviously, you could have other tasks, other hobbies, uh, work. You could have things that you are interested in outside of your relationship and your kids. But at the same time, you should strive to give the kids the best life they could possibly have. And if you're somebody like Vernon that had kids, you had a wife and you neglected them for fucking second deals. I don't think anybody should be looking up to you. Now, I have had some comments as to people that I've personally met Vernon and had personal good interactions with him as to how great of an individual he was. But honestly, I think that the measure of a man is the legacy that you leave behind. Now, Vernon left two legacies. He left behind the legacy of his family and he left behind the legacy of magic. And obviously, the legacy of magic is the one that most people talk about. The legacy of his family is really neglected. But we need to look at the person as a whole, not just as a measure of what improvements he made for magic. He needs to be looked as an individual. And as an individual, he sucked. 
Yeah, he was great at magic, but he sucked. I feel like that's definitely the daddy issues in me coming out just because my father was never in my life. He was, uh, I don't know, somewhere in a training facility in the Middle East somewhere doing monkey bars. You remember those videos back in the day when George Bush was our president of uh, Al Qaeda where you have all the... Um, all the people training for the Taliban and uh, they were training essentially in uh, kids' playgrounds. You remember those? Those were great. So just to summarize this particular pick cast on how Di Vernon was a terrible person, you shouldn't look up to people like this. Yes, you should study them. Yes, you should look at his works because his works are tremendous and they're vast and they're massive and you could probably get everything you need to know about magic by studying Vernon and his works, whether those are the VHS tapes from LNL Publishing, the Revelation series, the Stars of Magic, his books, his contributions to books, his pamphlets. You're going to get a, a, a pretty much everything you need to know to be a magician. But don't idolize this guy. He's a terrible dude. He's a terrible person. And he shouldn't be somebody that you're replicating pictures of. Fucking people younger than me replicating pictures of Vernon. He died in what, 92? It's almost 30 years ago. 30 years ago, and you still have people younger than me replicating his fucking pictures. It's fucking cringe. Take a shot every time I said fucking. That's the episode. It's a small one, but it's specific. It's on Vernon. I think that you might enjoy it. It's a nice little bit of a 10-minute listen here. Thank you guys for sticking around these. Hope to produce more of these. I hope to produce these more often because they seem to have good reactions from you guys. You can leave comments, concerns, questions. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at some comments here on the tail end of this video that I received in the last podcast. The Magic Buzz says, I liked it, but your voice sounds a little bit helium influenced. I hope you didn't turn the huffing during these trying times. I did watch a video the other day of an individual passing out after ingesting uh, quite a little bit of helium. I feel like that's Darwinism taking effect. Dig the format, the moving background, and pig cake face are kind of entrancing. Thank you. I'm glad you appreciate my moving face. That's the hard part when it comes to these particular videos. I want to make it a little bit visually appealing. So I want to have something for you to look at, something visually pleasing to the eyeball. And uh, that's the hard part because it takes a while for that to render. So that's the thing that turns me off when it comes to making these little snippets. But... I think it's well worth it. I think it's well worth the waiting. And it uh, came out to be a nice product. Of course, if you want to listen to it, I'm also uploading the audio version in the description below. You can click on that and listen to it in uh, whatever format it allows you to listen to. I think it has uh, all of them, Spotify, iTunes, and all that. So uh, there you go. Beating a dead horse with a stick? Come on, Mr. Cake. You know magicians call those things ones. I don't have a response for that. I just want to find an error school and change some lives. Boulder guy 888Y question mark says podcast. What are you, bro? Jogan? Magic Jack Maxwell says one time for the 305. A 305 till I die. Mr. Worldwide. Dale. I love this so much better than your live streams. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I love your live streams. I'm just saying, in my opinion, this is more my style. What well, seems to be the style of other people which is why i'm going to continue these but apart from that uh thank you guys thank you guys for listening and make sure to always stay frosty uh